103.8. Mark and John, great to be in your company. You too, man. Lads, I'll say from the get-go, I absolutely love Cardboard Gangsters. I really did. Thank because you. when you Thanks think so of summer films, we get so many superheroes and sequels and reboots. And for this to come along, I just... For me, it's up there with Logan as one of my favourite films so far this year. I'll oh, be brilliant. Honest with brilliant you. So what do you think of the, is the reaction so far to the film, Mark? Oh, it's a, well, Manchester, uh, we, we've only screened twice in Manchester and Newport in LA, so the reactions from the crowd in Manchester are unbelievable. Like people coming up to us and just saying that they thought it was like films they'd seen, like in British cinema, you know, gritty films. And then in LA, there was a guy from Hawaii who came up to me, you know, and he's. Um, he said that he grew up in a very similar situation to the guys in this film, so he was like, I really, he was crying at the end of the film. So it was, uh, I didn't say that to you, by the way, about that guy, but uh, it, was, remember yeah, it was unbelievable. He was, he was like, like a, a, woman he was like an indigenous, uh, he spoke pigeon, you know, the slang from Hawaii, but um, right. it was, uh, yeah, the reactions were amazing. Yeah, we got that in Ma Manchester and, and in Newport, people crying as well. And one, one woman in there was a new board shouted, No! And a certain <laughs> scene, I was like, It woke Actually, me up because I was falling asleep. He was asleep. <laughs> no, the reactions in the crowd there. were like really Amazing. weird. Yeah. Like people like screaming and going, Rah! And like, you Completely know. Completely American and weird. British, like very different. Yeah. But I just, from following you guys in your careers, and like when you, I, th I think this film takes you guys to a new level, really and truly. Like, Mark, just even you as a director, I think this is your best film. Just Great even thing. the way it's just the way you filmed it and just the editing and just the performances you're getting. Like, brilliant. And then, John, just for you, there's one scene without getting into it because we give too much away. But there's a scene in a bedroom where you are just literally at your lowest. And to get that performance, I wanted to ask you, how many takes did it, it was involved in that? Because for anyone one. sees it, one take. Because yeah, I imagine no that cut. was a tough one. Yeah, yeah one no take. cut. Yeah, no yeah. cut. Wow. We didn't plan that to see. That line was, Jay, Jay sits on the bed contemplating. Mm -hmm. But there was something always telling me that there had to be more than that because of the point in the story and what had happened previously in the previous scene. Mm -hmm. That this was sort of shown everything and how the torment of that, what has happened and the guilt. Mm -hmm. So we knew it was going to be more and me and him had a chat, but we never talked about what it was going to be ever mm -hmm. until it was action and then mm. turned into what it turned into kind of you know it's an amazing performance uh, mm. John absolutely Thanks, man. and the two of you writing the, the, the film together just cardboard gangsters for anyone that mightn't be unsure of the, the term like w because people might say ah they're just wannabe gangsters but where did you guys hear of that term as a matter of interest it's a popular term right. in Narendale, someone wants to be a gangster as a cardboard gangster you know what I mean mm -hmm. and I actually found out it's a universal term uh, even in New York that's a big term in New York mm. uh, urban sort of Term, yeah, so yeah, it's uh, it was just that's what it was always going to be, you know. And shooting in Darndale, like, what was that experience like for more ways than one? Because I'd imagine everyone's excited that there's a film taking place. So, was it difficult trying to sometimes keep, keep people at bay? Because you want to shoot very naturalistic performances, lads. So, what was that like yeah. just in general? It was, it was kind of good and bad because you know, we had a big, massive crowd of people following us everywhere. So, we had it was great for the atmosphere and it was great crack, but then maybe. The sound, you know, of like motorbikes going by, music, kids playing music. The uh, planes were going overhead. There was one scene where John was standing outside a window and talking to Sarah. Do you remember? And God, the planes God. were going every, I think it was every 90 seconds. So it was it was just a sound issue. But the, the community getting involved was amazing because it made it that everybody was... You know, together. It made and the film. It, you know, it, yeah, it did. It was. It made the film. Yeah. They were unbelievable, like the people. The soundtrack as well, gents. Like brilliant. Like the use of Irish hip hop in this. I just went like it's real credit. You know what I mean? Because you could have slapped anything on there, but the fact that it makes it even more like a homegrown yeah. gangster movie. From day one, I wanted Irish hip hop because mm -hmm. I met Little Dialect in a in a KFC in Blanchardstown and went, I love you. I think you're deadly, mm -hmm. and I want you to audition for the film. I don't know if you're going to get casted, but I want your music in it. And then we got his music and God Creative, which is a new hip hop artist coming out who was just unbelievable. He's like eight tracks in it, so diverse. Then another guy's, and then Mark, but Mark, yeah, like Mark was just really tuning into contemporary lads now in these sort of areas and what he listened to. And he was looking at the, the kind of electro stuff and all. He said, This is what you like now. And I was like, You're right, totally, because this is what I'm dancing there. Yeah. That wasn't really my idea to bring it in. And Mark brought that in as well. And, and it was just, it's, so, it's such a unique soundtrack. Like. Absolutely. Yeah. What's it like filming the nightclub scenes? Because for people who mightn't be aware, normally they would be shot with no music on. Yeah. It, because really, because just for continuity and also just for editing purposes as well. Is people that, can't make noise either. Yeah, is that difficult at all? Did that, did that it was, through those motions? Well, with the music, so a couple of the music scenes we'd have playback on set, like mm -hmm. even if it's a phone, 
because we know we're, I'm going to be cutting to the music in the edit. So, mm -hmm. you know, if it's a montage moment or like, so I'd be playing it to the cameraman or to the, you know, but but for the for the nightclub, we played the full blast of the music, like yeah, the whole right. crowd going just crazy. Just the feel of it before. And then the next it. take, oh, nice dead silence, and everybody's just bopping. And you they're know. all, some blues, what's up, yeah. <laughs> and everybody's there, you know what I mean? There's a fucking 150 people here and everything is there, like, you know? But the people actually, it's hard to get people dancing. Like for the first 20 minutes they'll be dancing, but then if you're talking over five hours, they just move like that and it yeah. doesn't look good. Yeah, so yeah. you're like on the microphone, like, come on, we gotta dance Trying one to more time. Excited, you know? Like, you know? It's hard to get them dancing full on like they would be in a nightclub for like five for hours. five hours. Yeah. Jeez, that is tough. And people don't realize that what goes on behind the scenes. Yeah. Just in terms of casting, gents, because you've got, a, there's a great cast just across the board in there. And you've got some people who've got very lived in faces as well there, you know what I mean? That really kind of add to the, the look and the authenticity to the movie. Uh, just like Stephen Clinch, for example. Yeah. You know, Stephen now, you know, just with his own personal life, like he's serving a stretch now at the moment yeah, yeah, yeah. is he aware of the, the, the feedback on the movie yes I moment? visited him the other day in Mount Joy yeah? Yeah. tell him about it, he loves it he never got to see the film yet Mark um, yeah, well, hopefully I'd love to get it in there for him uh, yeah. he's a very good friend of mine mm. and just found himself in a place he shouldn't have been you know and he was yeah. funny thing is he was out of trouble for 15 years changed his life completely mm. and he was just put in a very pressurised situation and I don't judge anybody I can't judge anybody anyway but um he was one of the you know the great faces and a natural okay. actor as well. He learned to act in Mount Joy twenty five years ago Is that right? in a play, yeah, Hatchet, and uh, he was yeah he was brilliant like and I, he's so funny as well, Lindsay, and he like he's like yeah, a comedian, you know. People know him as well from Noli in in Love Hate as yeah. well, yeah. and also just another actor as well of Love Hate fame as well is Dara Murphy, who yeah. plays Jimmy in Jimmy, the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Like he, he just, like that man iconic. was born to be like yeah. a kind of a mobster boss, isn't he? Big time, yeah. Like, he's iconic, yeah. When he's up close, when you're filming certain scenes, John, like what yeah. are they like? He's a very intimidating man, that's being honest with you, and I don't mm. get intimidated easily. And mm. uh, there's one particular scene where, there's one particular scene where he's being physical with me, and I, I'm not messing with you. I had bruises on my neck for four weeks, four weeks. Wow. Very difficult to breathe all the rest of that day. Couldn't smoke for a couple of days over it. I couldn't sleep for a couple of days. I'd take a lot of painkillers, and I don't even take painkillers ever. But that's how much he choked me, and, I'm, uh, and I couldn't breathe. But it worked for the scene, you know? Oh, it's a very powerful scene. But he's a sick but man. Yeah. <laughs> he's an unbelievable actor. He's the soundest fella ever, but he's a sick man when he gets into it. Like. But it's an amazing, actually, when you see someone's performance, and then you meet them, and you go, oh my God, they're just the, the nicest person. Well, Jimmy does that kind of transformation thing where you don't recognise him as a person anymore, mm -hmm. and he's pulled out whatever the darkness he has inside, that's what's representing him now. Right. And he's not Jimmy, because Jimmy in real life is the nicest, most charismatic, funniest dude ever. Mm -hmm. But when he turned, we turned into that card, he's getting a shit out of me. And he's, he's such an honest actor, because he's always looking for the emotional truth, the truth within the scene, where mm -hmm. he's connecting with something from his own past. I remember he talked about his brother, and you know his brother was murdered, and he connected with that in certain scenes to get to the place, you know? So mm -hmm. it's finding that, the, the honesty within a scene. I think that's, uh, Brilliant, you know, Jimmy. Just to go back to the way we started this interview, gents, like I said, I absolutely <coughs> loved it. And it was one of those films that really stayed with me because I wanted to see more of some of the characters that, you know, you know, don't kick the bucket, as it were. So what are the plans going forward? Has it has an idea maybe for a sequel been percolating away or have you got an idea for just a different type of movie altogether? Never a sequel, no. Mm -hmm. It's done. Uh, but how you? <laughs> no, no, but it just no, it turns into a franchise. No. Turns into like a franchise. It's not that type of film, you yeah, know. Yeah. It's 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 a one. Now the only thing you could do, TV series, potentially is a is like a, a US remake with the same name without without yeah. without was involved. Or, I'd be, a TV yeah. series if there was a right idea, if there was every interest in it, there would be an interest in that. But I like the way of just leaving it there forever and just yeah. it's always going to be in the vault there for Irish yeah. for Irish cinema. And anybody wants to make an Irish gangster film or mm. authentic, you have to, that's going to be the the mark. And it's not a brag, but because it's just never been done that type of film. You I know? think it's better on its own. I yeah. remember when we did between the canals, they were saying the same. You're going to make a TV show, but but it's better to move on. I think. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Here's me giving out about sequels in the summer. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Thanks for having Thanks. Thanks. Oh, Thanks. Good. Good. Spin. 103.8.